Musselmont of Biddy Tarot. It is so wonderful to welcome you to Christiana's Psychic Cafe. How are you? I am very well, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Now, we were just discussing off camera while we've emailed back and forth. We have reviewed each other's stuff. We have, you know, done some blog posts together. We've never actually had a conversation before. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It's so nice to be connecting, you know, face to face on this level. Absolutely. Now, you've been on my radar for a long time. I think most people who are watching know who you are. Uh, but I, I really want to start from the beginning. I, I have so much I want to ask you. And of course, we're interested in knowing the stuff you've got going on. I know you have some some stuff coming up that people are, will be very excited to hear about. But I really want to start at the beginning. Um, and, and first of all, now you are in Melbourne, Australia. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so let's go back to when did Taro enter your life? Tell us about that. How did that happen? Yes. Well, um, I think it was way back, you know, when I was 18, I, um, I was with a friend actually up in Sydney and we were about to head off to Germany for a six month um, student exchange. And I think we were just sort of, you know, walking around the city and we thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to get a tarot reading? So um, I went in and had my reading. And the one thing that I remember from that reading is that she drew um, the Emperor card. And she said, oh, you know, this, this trip to Germany and find like a wonderful boyfriend. It's going to be like really big. And I thought, oh, okay, yep, that sounds good. And I thought, oh, maybe she says that to everyone, you know, that would get her clients. Um, but, you know, lo and behold, I go to Germany. I met a great guy there. He's not my husband now, but, you know, at the time he was like, you know, the person. Um, and I thought, wow, this is pretty neat. There's something there's something in this. Um, and, look, I've always had an interest in, you know, I guess the spiritual realm. So, um, you know, as a teenager, I'd sort of get into, like, um, Wicca and, you know, witchcraft. Um, I'd read books about Buddhism, um, you know, tao, um, all sorts of things. Um, and so when I found the tarot and had that sort of firsthand experience of it, I thought, yeah, this is this would be pretty neat to learn how to read tarot cards. Um, and so from there, you know, I bought like I bought a crazy amount of books on tarot. I got my first deck from my mum, and I just studied like mad. Um, it was also at a time when I was studying at university, so it, and I was studying commerce, um, so it was this really nice creative outlet or sort of, you know, spiritual relief <laughs> um, that I could, you know, really um, play with and, and, you know, get my head into, uh, you know, again, sort of having to do like accounting 101 and economics and all that really dry stuff. So that was really the, the first part, I suppose, of, of my tarot journey. Now, I, I have a couple of questions from there. First of all, what was your first deck? Um, it was the, it's, it's always been the, right, the, what am I trying to say? The Rider Waite. In the um, spot. So, yeah, and I can't, it was the really, that's the one that I don't like so much. I have the Radiant Rider weight now and I love the colouring. And this one was like, I think it was more one of the original ones. Right, um, right. Yellow box, plaid background. On the back. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember, maybe it was yellow on the back or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, here you are in college studying commerce, which tells me a huge amount. Because one thing that's really admirable about you is you are a, a, just a juggernaut in terms of your business presence on the internet. You know, you are light years ahead of most people in the industry, and and it's brilliant. And I think one thing that happens in our industry, for whatever reason, a lot of psychic, intuitive people don't really see themselves as technical or aren't really grounded in the business and the technology, and clearly you've got that. Um, so did you end up getting a degree in commerce? Is that what you did? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I got an honours degree um, in commerce and management and I've worked, you know, in my 20s I was working in corporate, so I was a management consultant. I um, I also have my master's in human resource management, so 
that was kind of like my first life, I suppose. And then, you know, whilst that was going on, I always had tarot in the background. It's always been, I guess, like a hobby. Um, but certainly my primary career was in, in the corporate space um, up until, you know, my early 30s when I made that switch, um, which was, you know, scary, but it's so the right way to go. It's like for me, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful that, you know, you've, you've, um, you're acknowledging, you know, that sort of business focus for me because I feel like my um, zone of genius or sort of like, you know, my, my like gift is where I can bridge both the spiritual and the business realm. Um, I have an appreciation for both. I love doing, you know, businessy stuff. I love doing spiritual stuff. And yeah, it's just working, working really nicely together. Clearly it is. And, and clearly it can. Now, what do you say to the people who who don't see those two things as good partners, you know, I mean, in, in my mind, of course, those things go together. You and I are similar in that our full time business is spiritual. And there it is and, and fine. But there are people who just have a hard time with that. What do you say to them? Yeah, I mean, look, I think, you know, say as a pure, say, tarot reader, professional reader, um, you are giving, it's like an exchange of energy. So, you know, when you do a reading, you are pouring your heart and soul into that reading. And not only that, you have studied years and years. Um, and whether it's tarot study, it's life experience, it's, you know, getting across all different spiritual um, matters and, you know, topics and what have you. Um, there is so much that goes into that tarot reading. To me, it just makes sense that someone would pay you for that. Um, and also, you know, when you value your skills and your experience and also that you know, it's about the sort of change that you offer your clients um, in a reading, there's sometimes when you can help a client make a huge decision about their career to change their career. Now, what is that worth? Like, are you going to try and tell me that that's worth like you should only be charging $10 for that? Um, <laughs> you know, to help someone make those massive life decisions, the value of that is like crazy big um, and I don't think you know most of us don't even play in that space of you know if, if you put a dollar figure on on the value of that kind of conversation we don't even get close with our rates um, so look I, I always respect that everyone has different points of view and you know there's readers out there who are more than happy to read for donation or you know read for just small amounts of um, financial compensation, that's fine. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be doing that because that's, you know, you've got to go with what feels right for you. But for me, I totally feel okay about, um, you know, creating a business around what I offer because I know that I'm offering value. And that's, that's a business, right? When your customers acknowledge the value that you offer and they acknowledge it through financial compensation. That was so well said. That was beautiful. And I'm sure that people everywhere are just applauding that. That's fabulous. Okay, so let's go back into the, the way back machine. And so the the moment when you're you're successful, you're working in the corporate world, you're you're directly using your education, tarot runs in the background, but something apparently happens and you go pro with tarot. How what happens? <laughs> What's the magic bullet? Look, it was probably it's probably quite a few things, sort of a se sequential process. Um, so let me think. So yeah, whilst I was working corporate, I you know I had this website up, which is vidyatarot.com, um, and I think probably for a good like throughout the two thousands, um, I always had it up there with tarot card meanings. So it was pretty much as I learned, I would put up my you know notes and lessons. And over time, people started to refer back to Biddy Tarot um, to also learn for their own, you know, tarot knowledge and so forth. So even in those early years, it was building up um, a community and, and a following. You know, even like I was at Reader's Studio this, um, this year in New York and a lady came up to me and said, I've been following your site since like 2003. And I thought, oh, no, that's a bit embarrassing because it looked terrible. And... <laughs> 
you know, it certainly wasn't what it is now. Um, but, you know, there's there's some wonderful people who have been following since since then. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so it was sort of ticking around in the background. And then 2010, I think it was, um, actually, no, 2009 I had my first child and I was at home a lot, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll turn this stuff into an ebook. I started selling an ebook. I was doing more readings. It was kind of picking up. It was still, you know, pocket money and it was still sort of a, a hobby at that stage. Um, 2010, I read the book Four Hour Work Week from Tim Ferriss, and that was a life changer. Um, it made me see the potential in, in the business, you know, to switch it from hobby into an actual business. Um, and it also prompted us as a family to. Um, plan to go to Spain. We, we ended up living in Spain for six months for two years in a row. Um, and that in itself was a pivotal point for my business because it showed me that I could build a business whilst traveling and it was really cool because, you know, we could do fun stuff and the business was still growing. So um, I started getting around 2012, I started getting a lot of signs, you know, the business is going really well. Um, the income was getting closer to what it was when I was well when I was still working at a bank, um, and the income was starting to get to that same level. And I thought, okay, this is pretty good. Um, and you know, even my tarot readings, I was doing readings for myself. They were sort of lining up in the right way. And eventually, I remember it was August eighth, twenty twelve. I woke up and I was right. I was like, yep, this is it. We're we're quitting the day job. We're quitting corporate world, and I'm going to make the most out of, you know, Biddy Tarot. It's going to be the business. Um, and, yeah, like I said before, that was the scariest decision ever um, because, you know, as I was saying, I'd, I'd had, you know, I'd, I'd, I don't know, what is it, 10 years of study, um, you know, postgraduate qualifications in, um, you know, sort of business-related areas. And I thought, oh, am I just, you know, am I leaving all of this behind to set up it, well, not really set up, but continue my tarot business? Like, are people going to think that I'm crazy, you know, yes. giving up all the <laughs> corporate success, you know? And I was just scared. I was thinking, does this mean that I'm a flake? Like, what's going on? And I thought, no, nah, just do it, just do it. Um, and now, like, you know, as the sort of, what are we, two years um, from that point, um, as time has gone on, I've just seen so clearly how everything I've done, you know, from that sort of 18 onwards actually really aligns to where I'm at now. Um, so, you know, for example, I've got a team for Biddy Tower. I've got assistants who help in the background. Um, so that's my HR, you know, managing that team and, you know, engaging them, motivating. There's all my HR experience. Um, all the project management experience I've done is what helps me get my, you know, projects out there on time and, you know, to a high standard. Um, you know, certainly the business element, um, that's that's obviously, you know, coming through as well. So everything has actually led to where I am now, even though if you looked at it from an observer's point of view, like business, like commerce, um, you know, corporate into tarot, you'd think that's a little bit weird. But it just, it's seamless. It's amazing. And I, I think that's an important thing for people to get, you know, it's, it's the funniest thing that people will, th and when I say people, I mean sort of, you know, run of the mill people, non-tarot people, will hmm. think about tarot readers and, and have this very particular image in mind. And the fact is, the majority of successful tarot readers I know are well-educated, are grounded, are responsible business owners, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that is the reality. And it's understandable because learning 78 cards and how to read them is not for sisters, really, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I had I have a couple of questions uh, here. One is actually I want to switch a little bit. It's a cultural question. Uh, obviously, I'm American. I started my business in the U.S. very quickly because I happened to be near a military town, and I did a lot of work with the military. Very quickly, my business spread across the world that way. 
Mm. But when I started, I mean, having a website was not, was optional when I started as a professional tarot reader, you know, it was definitely a local thing. Um, and my, I, I guess I have two questions here. One is, do you have that local component to your business and what, what, what's that like and what has that been like? But the other question has to do with cultural perception. You know, like in the United States, I think it's very regional. On the coasts, along the coasts and in certain cities, tarot's very cool. It's de rigueur, bridal showers, weddings, whatever, having a tarot reader, corporate events. It's a good deal. But in other places, like the vast middle of our country, probably not so much. Yes. <laughs> how is it how is it in Australia? What's up what's up with tarot acceptability in Australia? Yeah, well, I mean, look, I, living in Melbourne, we're pretty cosmopolitan. Um, I think that tarot is reasonably well, you know, accepted. Um, like you said, you know, it's it wouldn't be um, unexpected to have a tarot reader at, you know, yeah, a bridal shower or, um, you know, even just um, I've just been invited to read at like a shopping centre, a mall, I guess, and, you know, for one of their events. Um so I think it's, you know, to that extent, it's acceptable. But, you know, oh, I have to be really honest, it is so not even close to where I'd love to see tarot. Like, I just, I, you know, I want to see tarot at a place where it's as normal as picking up a self-help book, you know. Like, why is it that we can say Deepak Chopra, um, you know, Louise Hay, look at those books and, and, you know, those authors, and you go, well, of course, like, that makes sense. And... It's so acceptable. But then if you started looking at a tarot reader, everyone's starting to get all these weird preconceptions. Ooh, tarot, crystal balls, fortune telling. Um, and, you know, even like whenever I throw the word sort of tarot out to people that I meet and say, hey, I'm a tarot reader, it's just interesting seeing, you know, the responses. Um, so, I, you know, whilst I think we're at an okay level, I would love to see that place where it's just as normal as a, yeah, as a self-help book. Well, and I, I would argue that, that the way you're doing your business is, is kind of working to make that happen. You know, I, I would say you probably are, along with me, along with a lot of people, we probably are actually doing that. Yeah, so the more of us, the better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Let's talk about that for a minute. The the whole thing, and I've I've written on this. I've written many blog posts on this. The whole sort of tarot is the the redheaded stepchild of the the spiritual thought movement. Um, and why is that? And here in the U.S., you know, one of the things that's true in a lot of our our urban areas, the majority of tarot readers are scam artists. They are the, um, there's a dark cloud over you. There's a curse on your family. I need $10,000 to lift the curse or someone will die soon. Mm. And that's, I mean, they define us in many ways here in the US. Do you have that going on in Australia? Well, yeah, see, this is the thing. Like when I was in New York in, in April and I remember walking around New York City and, yeah, just the neon signs, like... I, I, call, them the neon, I call them the, the, the neon psychics, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Like, and they're everywhere. And I thought, like, I actually just felt really embarrassed. Um, I mean, look, <laughs> I've not had any first-hand... I haven't had first-hand experience with them. Um, I should have probably just gone in and seen what happened. <laughs> But from what I from what I understand, you know, they're probably falling more into the um, well, a little bit further away from the ethical space. Um, but yeah, I, I felt embarrassed in a way to be a reader because I'm seeing a lot of these places, and I thought, ah, oh, that's why people think that we're like loonies or you know scammers, and that's why people don't trust tarot and thinks you know thinks it's evil. Um, because if, if tarot was always, you know, being used in that way to scam people, then of course people are going to think that. Um, I think about, say, in Melbourne, though, look, no neon lights. I have not seen a neon light tarot reader anywhere. 
Um, so that's a really good thing. We I, typically... hope listening. I hope they're not listening right now because then they'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Stay out of Melbourne. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking most of our readers will operate, say, from a new age store, um, you know, just, yeah, really nice, authentic people. Um, there's always different qualities um, different styles and so forth, but for the most part, like, it's a lot rarer to hear of scams, I suppose, um, in in our local area. And, you know, thank goodness for that. And are there, do you run into people with religious objection? Have you been picketed? Have you dealt with that thing? Look, I've been in conversations where it's gotten a little bit tense. Um and, you know, my gut's just like going, oh, my gosh, what are these people talking about? <laughs> but I'm trying really hard to remain calm and then my head's going, just be quiet, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whilst I feel so compelled to, like, just go, you're crazy, Tara is not evil, you know, I often just choose to go, right, you know what, I've got my opinion, you've got yours, we're not going to come to an agreement let's just not talk about this anymore um, because I don't, I really don't want to expend energy on folks who will, who don't get it and who will never get it because, you know, it's the squeaky wheel gets the oil stuff. I'd much rather spend the time with the folks who are like so excited to work with the tarot, who get so much out of it. That's the place that I want to play. I don't want to play with the naysayers. Nice. Too exhausting. <laughs> so now, tell me about your local business. What what goes on for you locally in business? Yeah, so this is a really interesting question. Um, okay, I I just love the internet because there's that global reach. Um, Any time I've really done local stuff, I've sort of like played around with the idea. I often get this feeling of like cramps like oh my goodness that means I could only serve the people in Melbourne if I did this local thing you know I've played with the idea of um, workshops in Melbourne and you know I haven't completely written it off but I think like the contrast of offering workshops online to a whole global community versus doing it locally you know the reach is completely different um, and whilst I really love the face-to-face -face stuff like you know energetically that's I love it, um, so much fun. But, you know, from sort of a scalability, sustainability stuff, um, it makes a lot more sense for me personally to be online and serving a global community. So as you started your business, I mean, the, the thing that I think is very interesting is you've become very well known as a tarot instructor. And I think that, you know, it's not all of us. But most of us, if we're going to be professional readers, we also choose to teach. I mean, doesn't that, doesn't that show up for people? I mean, mostly. Yeah, it tends to flow that way, doesn't it? It does. It does. And, you know, arguably, I think I've, I've discovered that some people are better teachers than others, certainly. Um, but you're well known for the, the teaching work that you do. How do you see... How do I want to put this? One of the things I've found in, in my own work is that my experiences with clients in, in every venue, you know, whether it's, I, I have read in some of the craziest places you can imagine. And I, I do like you, I mean, I do most of my work now on phone and on Skype, but, you know, for the past 25 years, I've read in, yeah, you name it. Um, and that's where a lot of my teaching comes from, is those years and years of reading for drunk people in bars, really. <laughs> um, and it doesn't sound like you've got that. <laughs> How many yeah. drunk people have you read for, Betty? <laughs> How many drunk people? Not many. Well, <laughs> unless they're, you know, on the other end of the email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose, you know, it's, that's, that's such a, you know, it's a fair question. Um, my experience has been around mostly around email reading. So, um, you know, being able to take the time to, you know, think about a reading, write it down and so forth. I've certainly, you know, I've had those face-to-face -face experiences, mm -hmm. um, but they're less frequent than the online experience. Um, 
I think, you know, when I'm teaching tarot, the place that I teach from is probably more reflective of my own learning journey, if that makes sense. So um, I think of like, you know, way back to when I was 18, what was it like when I first picked up that tarot deck and I had, you know, <laughs> 10 books in front of me? Like, what was it, what would make my life easier if I could go way back to where I was? Mm -hmm. um, and I think about that, again, that learning process and how do you break stuff down so it's not as overwhelming as it was when I was first learning, you know, because I had that just overwhelm experience of like, how do I remember all these cards? Um, and as I learned and progressed, I learned more about the techniques and the strategies to use of how to interpret the card instead of just memorizing what the card means, for example. Um, and look, you know, certainly um, I, I, was, I was counting up the number of readings I've done. It's close to like 10,000 readings. So, um, you know, whether, whether that's, you know, online or face to face, you know, there's so much that you learn during that, that experience. Um, that you know, I can I can certainly bring into um, my teaching experience. Uh -huh. yeah, um, the email readings, especially, and I do not do email readings. That is not a service I offer. Um, Teresa Reed does a lot of email readings too. I understand. Mm. And I gotta tell you, my hat is off to you. To me, that would be like the seventh circle of hell, having to do email readings. <laughs> Uh, talk to me about that process, about, you know, I, I am assuming that someone might email a question. Um, and, I mean, I've done email readings for my friends and whatnot, but to do it professionally, it, ugh, ugh, it just doesn't feel good to me. Um, obviously, you have to be a good writer, which you are, and, and I am too, but... Talk to me about the whole process from start to finish. What is an email reading with Biddy like? How does this go? Yeah. And look, it's this is this is something that has evolved over the years because, you know, if I think back to when I first started doing email readings, it was kind of like get the question, answer that question, lay out, you know, three cards, describe each three cards say this is what's going to happen and boom, reading done, right? Oh, thank goodness I don't read like that anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> so now it's, you know, I'm, I'm really linking into this idea of co-creation in readings and it not so much being about like, like being as if you're an oracle, here is what will happen, full stop. Um, but more about, you know, opening up possibilities and engaging the client in that experience. Now, doing that via email is quite challenging because you don't have the um, luxury of sort of checking in, asking questions, how's that, you know, connecting with you right now. Um, but I've learned different tactics to um, really get into that co-creation space, even though it's sort of a one-way um, conversation. So, for example, um, when people uh, request a reading with me, they go to a, a contact form. And in that, yes, they do provide their question. And I also ask them to provide a little bit more detail around that question. Um, but this is something I learned from James Wells. And he includes a couple of extra questions, which is, you know, what are some of the current challenges? Um, what's your desired outcome in this situation? And what would be, um, you know, how could this time together be spent in, you know, in a way that gives you value? What are you expecting from the session? And so this desired piece, I think, is really interesting because I remember I had one client once who, I think she ordered, I had like a, you know, will I get back with my ex spread once. Um, she'd ordered that and she was like, yep, are we going to get back together? And I wrote back and I said, it doesn't look, it doesn't look good, like it's, pretty unlikely. I'm really sorry that, you know, I have to give you this message. And then she wrote back going, good, because I didn't want to get back with him anyway. <laughs> I'm like, this is confusing. <laughs> you know, and totally different topic, but if we could just play with that for a moment, yeah. you know, I think every tarot reader right now is hearing that and, and laughing and cringing with us. What is it with the asking of questions about things that we have control over, right? I mean, if she doesn't want to get back together with him, then the obvious answer is, of course, you won't if you don't want to. 
I know. Do you have insight as to where fears were coming from when, when that happened? Yeah, look, I think everyone everyone seems to get readings for different reasons, you know. For some folks, it's about validating a desired outcome, so something that you want to happen and you're validating and you're looking for that particular answer. And then I think as those clients read through a reading and it's not matching to what they want it to be, then they discard that reading, which is, you know, um, sad because there's probably some important lessons in there for them. Um, you know, others are kind of just... Just, you know, throwing a question out to see what, what do the tarot cards say? You know, what am I going to get married? <laughs> we all love that one. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah, I just think everyone seems to go in it for different reasons. And I guess, you know, the folks that I just love reading for are the ones that go in with that curious mindset. It's like, I want to see what, what's the universe telling me about this situation? Like what extra information can I get to add to my own intuitive sense of what's going on? And then how can I use that to help me make my own decisions? Um, you know, that nice accountability, like where it's the client that feels 100% accountable for their own future and their own destiny and so forth. That's the place that I like to play. And I bet that's probably where you like to play oh, too. Of course. Of course, and I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned James Wells. I, I just think he is fabulous, you know, really. I've been following him since the old days of, like, um, the old Yahoo groups, and, and he's yeah. so wise. I, I really appreciate him. So I want to go back to something you said earlier uh, that, that really struck me, which was how you would like to see tarot be at a level of acceptability uh, you know and and i'm gonna okay you said you know just like any other self-help book and i'm gonna say absolutely and just like joining any church or going to temple or doing mm. any other thing that people commonly do that involves introspection that involves thinking about something bigger than ourselves you know, I, I would like to see reading tarot be on par with singing in the church choir, going to yoga, any of those things, right? We're, we're on the same page, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I would also argue that you and me and James and Teresa and, and everyone else is doing that now. You know, we're all working on making this happen. Mm. But is there a way that we could speed it up? What could we do or what could we refrain from doing to make that process happen more quickly? Oh, my goodness. That's like the million-dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Christiana? <laughs> well, I mean, on some level, I, I think we're doing it, you know, and I, I think you particularly are doing it with your fabulous presence you know with what you're doing and with and and this is something that i i just think is is wonderful with your model as slick as you are as corporate as you are you give a lot away for free and you know that feels counterintuitive to a lot of people too you would think a lot you know the person who has a bunch of freaking degrees and money stuff would not be the one giving stuff away, but you are. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. And I want to talk with you about your theories on that, but I'm sure you've run into the, the thought, you know, you should never give anything away for free. Don't give anything away for free. People don't value it if they don't pay for it. No, I think that's a load of crap. Obviously you do too. Um, so talk to me about giving it away for free about what you give away for free, how that works, and why you do it. Yeah, so, okay, what's the free stuff? You know, tarot card meanings, like, absolutely, that's that's the that's the big thing for Biddy Tarot. Now, if you, like, if you think of it, say, from a strategic perspective, um, that those tarot card meaning pages, I think, drive, you know, 80 to 90% of my traffic. That's what helps me get, you know, I was looking at my numbers, it's 1.5 million visitors in a year, like, that's insane. I can't even get my head around that. <laughs> um, and that's all because I'm giving out this free information. Now, you know, I think you'd have to be very um, 
you know, blind if you couldn't see the business like sense in that, right? Um, but you know, business stuff aside, I'd like I totally believe in like the abundance mindset. So, you know, this stuff of like I'm not going to give it away for free because it's got value. That's kind of like to me that feels like a lack mindset of you know I've just got to hoard everything and you've got to get like you've got to pay to get my stuff. Um, I think when you start giving, then more people are willing to give back to you. Um, and the feeling that I get in my business is just pure abundance because, you know, I, I, I get rewarded financially through a number of different means. And then that means that I can also give back some free stuff um, as well. And oh, it's just like, I can't describe it. The cycle is just beautiful. And it works nicely, yeah. And there's flow there. It, it creates yeah. flow. And I think that I, I completely agree. And I think that that's what we're doing. Because, you know, I don't know how it is in, in other parts of the world, but I know here in the U.S., there's an expression. If it's free, it's for me. Uh, right? Right? And yeah a lot of people will get their feet wet with the free stuff because hmm. they're skeptical, because they're worried, because they're just not sure. And this is where in a way, well, maybe we're just like drug dealers because we give them a free taste. And then of course, you know, they'll, they will invest their money. Uh, but I think the drug we're giving is a, is a pure and good drug. Don't you? <laughs> yes. But you know what? Okay. So I reckon there's some different ways of doing this. Um, you know how, it's, I haven't seen it done recently, but you might get, say, a blog post that's teaching a technique and it's got three techniques and it teaches you technique one, number one and then says, to get the other two, you must pay. Like, I think that's crap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, on, on our, we'll, we'll play what is crap here. I'll give you one. You go to the, a, a, a web page, someone's web page, a tarot reader, a spiritual teacher, whatever. looks like it's just going to be a regular web page. But you can't go anywhere until you sign up for their newsletter. Huh. You know, they have that, what's it called? Some kind of page that comes up and you must give them your ID before you can even see their first page. Yeah. I think yeah. that's crap too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can, you know, there's definitely good ways and bad ways of, of, free and you know all that all that kind of stuff I think yeah now you do something with students allowing students to get experience reading for each other this is yes. so exciting tell us about this oh yes okay so this is the Biddy Tarot Network um I think I started maybe way back in like 2011 um and it was because a couple of people have been writing to me going I really want to get experience. Like I'm happy to give free readings, but I just don't know how to like get myself out there. Have you got any advice? And I thought, Oh, well, I get quite a few people coming into my website. Maybe there's a way that I could help these people, you know, hook up because like there's an abundance of people that want free readings, you know, that's, that's never going to stop. Um, yeah. And you know, I, I personally get a little bit tired of getting those emails of like, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me. Can you just pull a card? I'm like, no. <laughs> um, here's my page. Um, but so anyway, so I knew that there were a lot of people that wanted free readings and there were a lot of students who wanted to practice their reading skills. So initially it was just, you know, I popped up a blog page, started listing people's details and their email addresses. Um, <coughs> now fast forward to, what are we, 2014. Uh, we've got something like over 200 readers on the Biddy Tarot Network and um, we now have a much better system to manage, you know, um, clients coming in, requesting a free reading, being allocated to a reader and then that reader's got, you know, a week to provide an email reading. Um, we've also got a Facebook group, like a private Facebook group for the, the 200 readers and it's just like it's awesome. It's so active in there. Everyone's supporting each other. You know, people like get sort of you know, strange questions and they post it and they're like, what do I do? Obviously protecting client confidentiality. Um, but, you know, the support there is amazing. And every time I've spoken to folks in the, the Biddy Tarot Network, they're just like, you know, the, the change that is happening for them is huge. 
they go in there like thinking, you know, never having read for a stranger and now suddenly they're reading for people every week. The confidence is like going through the roof um, and, you know, people come out of there within three to six months feeling like, hey, I could probably do this like as a professional. I could probably charge for my readings eventually. So it's so awesome to be able to support people in that journey from, you know, aspiring to be a reader to actually being a reader. You know, the the thing that just struck me, and it's something that I know to be true, but I think you've really kind of put it out there in, in a way, is that when we study tarot and when we read for others, we are so ourselves helped by that. You know, and I've, I've often said, and I say this in my books, that, that, you know, we all benefit from the study of tarot. And I say that in my classes, whether you ever become a professional reader, whether you ever read for someone else, doesn't matter. Through the study of tarot, you will grow and you will learn and you will be a happier person. Hmm. Um, but what I'm hearing from you, and I know this to be true, and I'm, I'm just so happy to hear you saying it, is that every piece of it along the way, from the study of the cards to the reading for others is a journey of personal growth for the reader. Mm. You know, when we talk about reading for others, you know, that is a journey of personal growth too. The the clients certainly grow in receiving their readings. But what I'm Mm. hearing from you is that when we study and when we read for others, we have the opportunity to grow even more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, even like, I'm sure like we've all had it, you've probably had it too, like when you're doing a number of readings, say in a week, and you start seeing the same cards, and you're like, oh, okay, this one's probably for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pay attention to this card, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, even I think also just having that experience of working with different clients, different questions, different expectations and so forth, you start to get a lot clearer about like, what is it that, you know, us as a society, like what is it that we're looking for in life? How, you know, um, and how as, I, as a reader, how can I help these people change and transform in their lives too? Um, and also how am I applying that in my own life? You know, it's, it's like holding up a mirror to yourself whilst working with, you know, clients at the same time. That's the beauty of tarot. <laughs> so true. So true. Now, I, I don't want to invade your personal space here but but one thing that you and I have in common although we did it in different eras and different countries is we have children whose mothers are tarot readers any stories you want to tell any comments thoughts anything yeah so like my my girls are two and four almost three and five um and look you know I've never had a problem with them you know, touching the cards, unless they're going to like bend them or rip them, then I have a problem. You are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but for example, like I've got the, I've got a Doreen Virtue deck with um, was it mermaids and something, dolphins. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, this is sweet. Like, so now that's their play deck. They play with it. Um, and even just like the other day, like it was the morning, my older daughter, Chloe, who's four, comes like bouncing into my bed and I was just about to draw a card for the day and I thought all right well Chloe do you want to draw a card so she draws a card we talk about the picture I'm like what's what's happening in the picture why do you think that's happening and it's just beautiful like hearing her insights um of you know what she sees because she doesn't have any of the sort of knowledge that we do and I think that's a gift you know to be completely beginner's mind and see it as exactly what it is and just to hear those insights, it's wonderful. Um, and yeah, like it, I know there's probably folks out there going, "Oh my goodness, how could you give your you know, your children evil tarot cards?" Oh, <laughs> I've probably got like you know the um, government knocking on my door trying to take away my kids because I'm doing something terrible. But like seriously, it's pictures. Like, come on, right. Right. And, you know, we can tell a story about them. It's just like reading a kid's storybook. Um, But, you know, we've got such a rich story happening in this one picture and we talk about it. You know, like, okay, instantly I'm thinking, say, Six of Pentacles. Like, what a great story that can tell. Um, You know, when we've got abundance, it's nice to share it with others. 
tell me where the evil is in that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you, my kids grew up having, I mean, I had my office in my house. Sometimes my kids had to be host and hostess to my clients, my students coming in and out of the house. When I had a shop coming in and out of the house, they used to be, I used to run a psychic fair. They, you know, I mean, they were very much a part of the business mm. as they were growing up. They're now, one is almost 30 and one is in their early 20s and they survived it. They're doing okay. <laughs> I think all goes well. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think it's a, a good way to raise kids because, you know, thinking parents have thinking children, you know, and, and if kids are going to grow up around a system like tarot, I think they're, they're going to grow up with open minds and they're going to grow up being able to think about things and communicate and extrapolate. And, and there it is. Yeah. Now, I, I'm thinking, sorry, I'm just thinking of another um, example. I can't remember who I was talking with. It was another reader and she had a teenage son and she would use the cards with, with her son in order to open up conversations. So she'd just sit with him and go, hey, why don't we just pick a card about, you know, what's been going on like this week? And he'd draw a card and then they could talk about the picture so rather than like going, sitting in their room and going, what's been going on, son? You know, like you've got something, you've got this thing that you can talk about and you can talk about that that story as if it's separate from you. Like there's something beautiful and therapeutic and engaging in that. Um, and I guess that's sort of more of like, you know, that counselling um, psychoanalysis type of, you know, way of working with the cards. Absolutely. It, it, it doesn't have to be about telling fortunes here. It's, you know, that's just about having a conversation and having sort of a focal point for that conversation. Absolutely. And I think, in, in fact, I have um, a, a few clients who uh, have me work regularly with their teenagers for exactly that purpose, you know, that... Mm -hmm. You know, a shy teenager is not going to want to tell anyone what's going on. But if I show them a picture of it, you know, they have to talk about it. And, and there it is. And they feel a relief at that because it's it's right there. They can see it. I can see it. You know, now we can talk about it. But I'm, I'm very excited for you. I think as your kids get older, you're, you're going to have so much fun. Um, parenting from that tarot perspective. I, I really do. I think it's going to be. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> so you've got a bunch going on right now. And, and, I, mean, I, I still have a million questions to ask you, so we're going to have to have you back. Uh, <laughs> but at this point, I really like you to tell us what you've got going on. What are you offering right now? What can people take advantage of? You offer so much. Share. Thank you. Well, um, we are right in the thick of a, a wonderful launch. So um, starting in August, I am running a six-week online tarot course to help people read tarot with confidence. And if you head over to tarotfoundations.com forward slash TF2, you can sign up there. Um, it's, you know, this, this is a course that where we just really deep dive into the tarot reading, um, skills, strategies, techniques, so that you can walk away feeling like, you know, really confident about, um, picking up those cards and doing a reading for someone. And, you know, we, like we all know, like when you feel good and confident about what you're doing, that's when you get like really good intuition flowing. Um, that's when you can start engaging more people, help more people, um, you know, even just, even if it's just to be reading the tarot for yourself, like what we were talking about, the self-development and the personal growth, um, that comes through tarot is just like crazy good. So, um, <laughs> if that sounds, you know, if that sounds like something that, you know, listeners are interested in, then absolutely um, head on over there because we've only got a short window where the enrollment is open. So it's tarotfoundations.com forward slash TF2. Um, I've also got, you know, a bunch of, you know, tarot guides, masterclasses, um, and loads of other, you know, tarot content and goodies over at biddytarot.com. Um, but yeah, certainly the big event I think for now is is the the course that we're running. And I think you know, it, um, 
even before, like, you know, as we're recording this, you know, the enrollment hasn't yet officially opened. We've already got 70 students in. Um, so it's going to be massive. So I'm really excited and I hope that, you know, everyone can join us in that course. Terrific, terrific. And I, I, you mentioned the URL Tarot Foundations. Now that's also the name of a, a fabulous thing that you've written. Can you just share a little bit about that? Because I want people to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, it was a couple of years ago I wrote Tarot Foundations um, and it's 31 days to read tarot with confidence. Now, you know, I don't necessarily expect that you have the exact 31 days and boom, you're done. Um, but this is about having 31 days of, you know, daily lessons and activities that you can start to put into place in order to, you know, get really clear on the tarot card meanings and how to unpack tarot cards in a way that you don't have to memorize cards. Uh, and I also cover, you know, the basics of reading the tarot. So it's a great, you know, concise guide to help you really kickstart your tarot reading career if, if you want to go down that path or even, you know, just um, as a hobby. And yeah, so that's in as an ebook format. Um, and then, of course, tarotfoundations.com is kind of like the um, learning hub for Biddy Tarot. So the ebook is kind of like a bit of a, a taster. And then, you know, if you want to really deep dive over at tarotfoundations.com is where we house all of our um, courses and, and so on. So you can get right into, into the material as well. Perfect. Perfect. And, you know, I, I really encourage people, uh, wherever you are in your tarot journey, definitely check out biddy.com. There is a lot of really great information there. And um, now just to, you know, because, you know, I know people want to know everything you have to offer. You offer email readings. How else can people have one-on-one -on -one with you? Yes, so um, there's email tarot readings, which I'm probably doing a little bit less of at the moment, but I've got a fantastic team of endorsed readers that I you know, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. um, but also I do, you know, tarot business coaching because, you know, as we've sort of discovered today, I love, I love playing in the business space. Um, and I just get such a kick out of how, helping other tarot readers and, you know, just, you know, healers, energy workers, whatever you want to call yourselves. <laughs> um, but... Um, helping people to build up businesses that, you know, nurture them. And, you know, it's both a financial success but also personal success and helping the people that you want to support the most. So I also offer, you know, the business coaching side of things as well. And, oh, what else haven't we covered? Oh, Soul Meditations is another, um, oh, another program. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Tell everyone about that, yep. So Soul Meditations is a series of really deep guided visualizations with each of the major arcana cards. Um, and, you know, it's this beautiful opportunity to connect very deeply through your subconscious mind with the major arcana. And that can help you not only understand and, and learn these cards, but, you know, it, it helps to really unpack sort of the energy of these cards in a way that, you know, if you want to manifest a particular energy in your life, you go through the full, you know, visualization with this card and you just bang, you know, stuff's like popping open everywhere. And, um, you know, the shifts that I've seen in, in the people who've engaged with soul meditations has just been amazing. So obviously highly recommend that one as well. Goodness me, there's so many different things, so many different <laughs> ways to connect with tarot. <laughs> and, and, you know, we have time for one more question, and, and this will be my final question. Clearly, you're a good writer. Clearly. Do you identify yourself as a writer? Is writing just something you have to do to create your business? How do you see yourself as a writer? Yeah, interesting. Um, I think, you know, like I know, I know that being a writer is incredibly important in, in online space, you know, to write blog posts that are interesting and compelling, to write emails that are interesting, to write readings. Um, and I think certainly over the years it's, it's changed and, and developed. You know, when I was in university, the type of academic writing was, you know, like one paragraph might last the whole page and there's references and it's highly technical language and you could never say I 
Um, and now, like, it's completely the flip of that. You know, it's all about personal writing, Casual. short, sharp paragraphs, conversations in the writing. So I've certainly had to change my style, which took, you know, probably a good couple of years. Um, but now it's, you know, it's, it's really fun writing blog posts and it's, it's pretty easy. Um, I've often dabbled with the idea of, oh, would, would I like to write a book? But then I think, oh, man, you'd have to, like, write for months and months nonstop. Years. 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 Yeah. So that kind of scares me. Magically. I mean, if we look at Tarot Foundations, I mean, you have written a book. Well, yes. Really? Yes. You know? Yeah. It's just how you want to deliver it. And and there it is. Yeah. Well, that is our time. Bridget Esselmont, Vidi Tarot, I want to thank you so much. It has been delightful to spend this time with you. I hope you'll come back again soon. Thank you so much. I've had so much fun.